My name is Theodore Timpson. I'm the founder of Young Spirit Foundation, uh, which I started a, a few years ago, 2008. The purpose of Young Spirit Foundation is to create space for young people to experience wisdom and connection. And that will happen, uh, hopefully, in their school environments. For a long time, as a teacher, I was seeing that young people, children, and adolescents didn't have many opportunities to explore who they were and what mattered to them in their lives in school. And often they would look for this in experiences outside of school uh, through youth development organizations, which have often been very effective at, at helping them work through issues. I believe that this is an integral part of education. And to that end, we decided we wanted to start a model high school that would be a wisdom-centered school a school that would place self-development, personal development, connections with other people, uh, connections with the unknown at the heart of education. And uh, for, for a couple of years, we held a number of events, calling together teachers, parents, community leaders, uh, to talk about what such a school would look like. I imagined that it would be an independent school. I, I didn't see room for this kind of an education to happen within the public system. But I began to have some conversations with people who were very excited about the charter school movement in California where we're based. And I was con became convinced that it was possible to actually offer this to a wider audience through the public school system as a charter school, and I began looking for opportunities to do that. Eventually, I found a group of people working in the, the South Bay uh, who were interested in starting a high school. They, many of them were already associated with a charter school that served K-8 to students. One of the reasons that I was interested in, in focusing on high school first was that there were many alternatives for parents for families at the K-8 to level in the Bay Area. And these disappeared at the high school level. I'm speaking in both the public and private sector. Uh, at the high school level, we found mainly schools that, that were the traditional comprehensive style, serving maybe two, 3,000 students with a lot of different course offerings, uh, and not many opportunities for those students to really connect with one another on a more personal level or connect with their teachers unless they were motivated to seek those experiences out themselves. We wanted a school that was uh, smaller, serving maybe 400 students, uh, where the emphasis was placed on getting to know students well. I, um, I became very interested in the Coalition of Essential Schools, which espouses a similar philosophy. And this group in the South Bay wanted a school that, that had many of the components that I was looking for. A uh, chance for students to explore the world, the real world, through internships, through service projects. A chance for them, for their learning to be more active outside the classroom. Opportunities for project-based learning, for uh, designing their own experiences for more uh, personal relationships with adults. And as we were talking, as we were developing the ideas for this school, I began introducing the idea of wisdom and what a wisdom-centered school would look like. For example, having a curriculum that would allow students to explore the, uh, their own state of consciousness through mindfulness practice. Uh, learning the practice of, of calming their minds and, and their emotions and becoming more aware of how their feelings were influencing their day-to-day -day actions. Uh, this is a practice that's gaining more and more traction in educational circles and is showing a lot of benefits for students at all age levels. Another aspect of a school like this, I felt, would be an exploration of the wisdom traditions of the world. Uh, many students come to school already holding some 
affiliation with a wisdom tradition. Some do not. Uh, but there's no question that in our increasingly complex and connected society, we run more and more often into people who have different experiences with wisdom traditions. And simply to understand them, it's important to, to study those, to become aware of, of what they mean. I also feel that this exploration helps students understand the deeper questions of their lives. What is my life for? What is, what is a purpose that is worth, worth following in my life? How do, I, how do I answer the questions that cannot be answered by science? Uh, what lies beyond the known world? I found that this group that I was working with was very receptive to these ideas. Um, at first I was unsure if, if these approaches would be accepted or if they would want a different, different one. They're unusual. When we began, it was a small steering committee of uh, 10 or 15 people who were meeting on a regular basis. Uh, I, was, I was immediately invited in to be a part of this group. One of the practices of the group was to really work by consensus. In fact, early on in our process, one of the members suggested that that be our way of, of reaching decisions. And as soon as I knew that, heard that, I knew that I was working with a rare group of people because the consensus process is, is, uh, requires a, a high level of sensitivity to differences of opinion, um, a willingness to work through ideas until they're really satisfying to everyone involved. And I could see as we continued working together that this group had the capability of doing that. There really wasn't a huge amount of of tension as we started with nothing and constructed an educational program. Uh, part of that is because people already shared a lot of ideas about a democratic process in a school, about uh, young people having a lot of freedom to explore on their own, about the value of non-traditional educational experiences outside the classroom. So in a sense those issues didn't really need to be worked through. At other times, there, there were questions of how much emphasis would be given to this or that, how formalized would the curriculum be, uh, how did we need to restructure our program in order to make it appealing or, or viable in the eyes of the board that would eventually be reviewing our charter. But over the next six months, we, we began slowly to work out this program. And I think one of the important parts of this process is that we took our time. And we gradually got to know one another, as well as what we wanted to do. Um, we often held meetings in a member's home, preceded by a potluck dinner. So there was a, a lot of uh, social engagement around what we were doing. I felt that this was integral to creating the kind of culture that we wanted eventually to exist in our school. And we spoke about that, about the need for our founding group to really embody the values and the culture of this school that we were creating. So I began to feel that perhaps we weren't moving fast enough. We'd been meeting for six months and we still didn't have a charter document written. One of the things that lit a fire underneath us was that we were doing a public presentation of our program uh, back in October 2010. And this forced us to, to really make some decisions and, and keep moving forward on the document itself. We were very gratified with the number of people who turned out for our program. That was in large part due to some of the deep connections in the community that some members of our founding team already had people with a lot of experience uh, and who had gained the trust of a lot of families in terms of their ability to pull off a viable and a philosophically appealing program. So we had over a hundred people and there was a lot of excitement around it. I think the, the fact that that excitement continued was based on what we presented to them. 
and that was broken into two main components. The first component was called integrative studies. Integrative studies is the bringing together of the core subjects of English social studies, sciences, and the arts into this umbrella called integrative studies and the idea that these teachers will work together to create a program that will satisfy standards in these subject areas while weaving them together along broad-based themes. So for example, the first year's theme would be the topic of origins, origins of culture, origins of the universe, origins of life. Uh, this theme allows us to bring in all kinds of source material uh, in all kinds of disciplines. And we felt that by weaving the, the curriculum together this way, we would be able to make learning more meaningful for students and help them to draw more personal connections to what they were learning in school. The other major component of this curriculum we call the Wisdom Project. And the Wisdom Project is a collection of eight different uh, programs within the school. One of them is the practice of mindfulness, which students will be introduced to immediately upon entering the school in their ninth grade year, and will become a core practice. Another aspect is the study of world cultures in an immersive, immediate way, not simply, uh, not simply in a textbook way, but in personal, interpersonal experiences, both among the students and with the world outside the school. Another component will be what's called the Personal Creed Project. And this is a project that was designed by uh, John Krieger, a teacher in Fremont, who had developed it with his sophomore students over 20 years and had really refined, refined the process. And the Personal Creed is a statement by a student of, of what really matters, what, what that student stands for in life. And in order to arrive at that, students go through a process of really examining all the influences in their lives. What has made them who they are? It's a very natural process for adolescents. And with the kind of guidance that a program like this gives them, they can really make a lot of discoveries. And it's very memorable to them. It helps to focus uh, a lot of their experiences later on. Another component of the Wisdom Project is what we call human life studies. And this is an examination of the issues that really make people successful or unsuccessful in life. Their ability to handle money, their ability to work with relationships, their understanding of physical health and diet, their understanding of economics, financial management. Other components of the Wisdom Project include uh, service learning, where students uh, ask questions about the needs of their community, design projects that will help to answer those needs, and actually go out and perform those projects in the community. This leads naturally into another component of internships, which will happen in students' junior year, where they will become officially linked to a particular organization or enterprise, and they will uh, spend a fair amount of their, of their school time in these, these internships and they will begin to structure part of their academic studies around the issues that they're, they're dealing with in their internships. So they might be working with an environmental organization or they might be working with a technology company. We have found a school in the Bay Area that already implements an internship program with a high degree of sophistication and we are uh, following their model. Uh, this is one of the MET uh, met schools that is in Oakland. Finally, the Wisdom Project includes Senior Seminar, which is a, a fairly well-tested program uh, in many schools where seniors really step away from the typical coursework that, that students do and design a very intense, intensive, integrative project that that brings together a, an experience in the community, academic study, a creative uh, development of some new 
some new idea or some new uh, invention of their own or some new artistic work and they spend probably about 50 percent of their senior year on this project culminating in an exhibition at the end of the year and lastly the 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 last component of the wisdom project is an exploration of wisdom traditions, as I described earlier. So as we described this program, we met with a lot of enthusiasm. This is not a program that has been collected together, in my experience, in this form uh, very often at all. And we felt a lot of excitement from the parent body for such an option to be uh, available to their, to their young people. Uh, so this gave us confidence as we moved forward writing the charter. We uh, submitted the charter in December of 2010 to the Santa Clara County Board of Education. We decided that we wanted to submit the charter directly to the county board because we felt that it had a countywide benefit. Uh, we didn't see any programs like this anywhere in Santa Clara County. And we envisioned eventually this, this school being able to operate in multiple locations throughout the county, uh, serving the, the students who were not satisfied with what was uh, conventionally available to them. The chartering process is a political process. Uh, it really depends on the, the expectations of the authorizing agency, in our, in, our case, in our case, the Board of Education, the county. Um, often charters are perceived as serving a particular population of students, low-income students, low-achieving populations. We made the strong argument that this program would serve those populations, but not only those populations, that we were reaching out to essentially any student who could benefit from a more personalized approach to curriculum. Our program had an hour-long advisory uh, every day where students had a chance to interact with a, an adult who gets to know them well on a daily basis and with each other on a very uh, close basis. Students will move together in classes of about 100 students as a cohort through the four years, followed by their teachers. So their, their core academic teachers will really know them by the end of those, those four years. They'll be assessed on a portfolio basis rather than simply a GPA scale. Uh, they will become very comfortable doing, doing uh, exhibitions of their learning, exhibitions of their portfolio. They'll become very used to demonstrating what they have learned through an experience. We could tell in our initial public hearing before the Board of Education that they were already impressed with us. We brought in a large number of people to support the petition with public comments. And the, uh, the process of a, a board meeting allows this. Um, in, in California, every, any member of the public is welcome to com make a comment for two to three minutes on any topic. And we brought in people who were really supported our program, and we, we made sure we had a diversity of voices, a diversity of opinions as to why this program would benefit the county. And they were impressed with the numbers of people that we brought in to support the program, and with their quality as well. When it came to the approval meeting, we uh, immediate, we ran into some obstacles. Uh, a couple members of the board were raising some uh, legal objections to how we were presenting the petition and how, how we had communicated with uh, the school districts in the area. Um, a county board is very sensitive to encroaching on its districts. So they asked for an extension, which we accepted uh, on the chance that it would give us more likelihood of approval. And finally, in our third hearing, we were able to gain unanimous, unanimous approval for Communitas Charter High School in Santa Clara County.